Donald Trump trying to rewrite the history of January 6th, but there is new reporting from ABC News, and it really details the extent of Trump's failure to respond or try to calm the violence at the Capitol for hours, even when his own vice president was in harm's way. And this is not coming from Trump critics. This is according to people under oath in his inner circle. Do you remember those chants, hang Mike Pence? Well, according to sources familiar with Jack Smith's investigation, quote, former Trump aide Nick Luna told federal investigators that when Trump was informed that his vice president had to be rushed to a secure location, Trump responded saying, quote, so what? The sources also say that Luna told investigators that Trump showed he was, quote, capable of allowing harm to come to one of his closest allies at the time. His aides and lawyers reportedly spent 20 minutes trying to persuade Trump to release a statement calming the crowd. It was no use, so they chose to leave him alone. And that's when Trump himself tweeted that Pence, quote, didn't have the courage to do what should have been done. Now, sources say former Deputy Chief of Staff Dan Scavino and others rushed back into the dining room, quote, to explain to Trump that a public attack on Pence was not what we needed. And Trump responded, but it's true. When Scavino talked to Trump that night, he told Trump, quote, this is all your legacy here. There's smoke coming out of the Capitol. But he said that legacy could remain intact if Trump took the right steps moving forward. A spokesperson for the Trump campaign now calls this report, quote, secondhand hearsay. With us now, former Trump White House Press Secretary and Communications Director Stephanie Grisham. She was also Chief of Staff to Melania Trump and the author of the book, I'll Take Your Questions. Now, what I saw at the Trump White House... Direct quotes from people under oath. Does it track with what you experienced? Good morning, guys. It absolutely tracks with everything that I experienced and heard and have been talking about, you know, ever since January 6th. Dan Scavino, especially, he was at Trump's side 24-7. If they weren't together, Trump was calling him constantly. Dan was also really good at giving him some good advice, and he would oftentimes be one of the only people that uh, Trump would listen to. So, you know, I'm very hopeful that, that Dan has been t telling the truth and, and testifying, but I'm also a little skeptical because they were very, very close for a very long time. Stephanie, the, the comment that uh, is relayed by Nick Luna about Trump responding, so what, yeah. uh, when he was told that Pence had to be rushed to a secure location, uh, sources said that Luna saw it as evidence that Trump was, quote, capable of allowing harm to come to one of his closest allies. Do you think that he was, that he was capable of that? Well, absolutely. He had no regard for anybody but himself that day and the people who would do his bidding, meaning the people at the Capitol, you know, hoping that they would stop the election from happening. And, you know, again, Nick Luna, that's another great example of somebody who was by the president's side for all the time. He started out as his body man, and then he moved into the outer Oval Office. And Nick's a good guy. I believe that what he said was true, and I believe that, you know, he definitely would be somebody who would cooperate, and I'm, I'm really glad to hear it. Obviously, huge concern over what happened three years ago, but looking at how the American people feel now about what may happen after the next election, is troubling. CBS did some really interesting polling in the last couple of days. And what they found is 49%, Stephanie, so about half the country is expecting violence from the side that loses in future elections. Look at those numbers. That is very concerning. And I wonder if it surprises you. It sadly it doesn't. I mean, you know, we live in a split screen world right now. People watch either, you know, the Fox News of the world or or they're watching maybe the MSNBCs of the world. And I think that's a problem. I think that every the vitriol is just it's something terrible. And I think that we should be talking about January sixth. I resigned that day. It was a horrible day for our country. But I also think that we should be looking forward at what a potential Trump presidency would look like. I think that's really important for people to understand. You know, we keep talking about democracy. Democracy is, is you know, it's our way of life's going to be taken away. I don't think people understand by, by and large what that means and how it could affect them. I think that's something that should be talked about more. Well, how would you explain it to them? You were there. You were there until that day. Absolutely. I mean, I, I was there for six years. I started with him early on in 2015, and I was a true believer. I thought this man would come in and up in the, the politics of our country and the bureaucracy. And, you know, he sure did those things, but not in the way that I had envisioned. And I think it's important for people 
who were like me or who are like me now, you know, who, who really believe in him to understand how another Trump presidency will be. So what is democracy? That's the people having the freedom to act and speak freely. I think under Trump, you're not going to be able to do that, or you are going to be able to do that as long as you're talking just about him in positive ways. I think free press will be really something that's going to go, go by the wayside. I remember when I was press secretary, he wanted me to kick everybody off the White House grounds constantly. I think that's something that's going to, you know, happen. I think that we're going to be aligned with countries like China and Russia rather than our NATO allies. So I think it's important that people are understanding really how he's going to operate. All right, Stephanie Grisham, thank you. The book is I'll Take Your Questions Now, What I Saw at the Trump White House. I just hope we get fair treatment. Uh, because if we don't, our country's in big, big trouble. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Well, can former President Trump be barred from holding office? This is a question that the Supreme Court is going to have to address one month from today. The high court will review this unprecedented decision by the state of Colorado, their Supreme Court, that removes Trump from the state's ballot, citing the 14th Amendment's insurrection clause. The court argued that Trump's actions on January 6th and in the days that followed, quote, constituted overt, voluntary, and direct participation in an insurrection. Let's turn to our senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig, with much more on this. So, Supreme Court has to address this. Yes, they do, Poppy. So, our Latin legal word of the day is certiorari, which translates to they're taking the case. Important to know, it takes four of the nine justices to vote to take a case. Now, we don't know which four or how many or whether there was more than four. We never know that. By the way, people are asking, will Justice Thomas recuse himself because his wife, Jenny, had some involvement in some of the events leading up to January 6th? The answer is no. It's up to him. He hasn't done so before. There's no reason to think he will do so today. Now, if we look at the order the Supreme Court gave us on Friday night saying they're taking the case, it's all about the scheduling. So let's take a look at the calendar so we understand how this is going to play out over the next several weeks. January 18th, 10 days from today, Donald Trump's brief is due. He goes first because he lost below. Then January 31st, Colorado's brief is due. Then Trump gets a chance for one last say in what we call a reply brief on the 5th. And then the big data circle, February 8th, one, week, one month from today, that's when we'll have oral argument in front yeah. of the Supreme Court. By the way, that will be audio live stream. The court does say, that. People should know, although we think you should be able to watch it with cameras, yes. that's a separate debate. You can listen to it. You can listen to it. You can to listen it. to all of this in real time or go back after. Talk about the arguments exactly. that you believe are going to be central to this on both sides. Yeah, so a couple things to know about the arguments. By the way, the Supreme Court did not tell us what specific issues they'll be considering. Sometimes they do that. They did not do that here. If we look at Trump's brief, first of all, this argument that he did not commit insurrection, he claims that, mark my words, the Supreme Court is not going to rule yes or no, insurrection or no. It's not what they do. They're reviewing the constitutional and procedural elements of this. Do not count on some grand pronouncement from the court about that. We also, I think, are going to see Trump argue, he's argued before, that it's up to Congress how the 14th Amendment works, not each individual state. And so the argument will be, if you look at the 14th Amendment, it actually yeah. says Congress shall pass law to enforce this. Now, the question is, does that mean Congress only or Congress, but also the states, as we saw in Colorado? And I think the third argument that we're going to see, given Trump's prior briefing, is that the president does not count as a, quote, officer. The 14th Amendment actually does not say president. It says senator, representative, but it also says officers of the United States. Logically, you think, of course, that has to be president, but there's ways you can lawyer this well, to the point where it does not include the president. It says president the line above that, but also, the I mean, this court, many of the justices read things very textually. They may... Right. It may benefit Trump here. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Before you go, what about the calendar big picture in terms of what other states. Yeah. Looking at the map, this is about Colorado, yeah. but what the Supreme Court decides here could affect many other states? It, it almost certainly will, and I think it's this is part of the reason the Supreme Court took the case. If we look, there are about eight states right now where yeah. these 14th Amendment challenges have been rejected. Some of them are final, some of them are still pending further appeal, but eight states that have said, no, we're not disqualifying them. You have another 15 or so where we have pending appeals, pending efforts to get Trump off the ballot that have not been ruled on one way or the other. And then you just have that minority of two, Colorado and Maine, who have, for the moment, thrown him off the ballot. And by the way, important point, both of these states vote on Super Tuesday, March 5th. So if you're wondering how long until the Supreme Court rules, remember, they're hearing argument February 8th. I think it's certain Less they will rule. Month. 
Yes, less than a month from now, and I think they will certainly rule before March 5th because voters in Colorado and Maine and elsewhere have to know, I think fairly, is he going to be eligible or not? So I think we're going to get a really quick decision from the court. Ellie Honig, extremely helpful. Thank, Thank you. you.